You don't have to be an expert to appreciate a great archaeological discovery. If you're already following us, which you definitely should, you've probably heard about plenty of fantastic archaeological finds in the past. We're here to bring you something fresh and exciting, a roundup of some lesser known but still amazing finds. These archaeological gems are like buried treasure just waiting to be uncovered, and we're giving you the inside scoop. The oldest known swords in the world were discovered at Malatya Arslantep Mound in Turkey over 40 years ago during excavations of an old mud brick palace structure. Prior to their discovery, archaeologists believed that the earliest swords dated back to around 1600 or 1500 BCE. The nine swords from the Arslantep archaeological site are well over a thousand years older, dating back to the early Bronze Age. Marcella Frangipane's team at Rome University discovered the swords and daggers in the 1980s and was surprised to know that they were made of an alloy of arsenic and copper. The swords have a blade, guard, grip, and pommel similar to modern-day swords and were shorter in length than most contemporary examples. There's debate about whether the swords were merely status symbols or served a practical purpose. Regardless, they were weapons that could inflict harm in the hands of someone who meant to use them for that purpose during the early Bronze Age. This part of the world is thought to be the birthplace of the sword, and discoveries like these blades appear to confirm it. In summer 2022, a vast collection of Angkorian crown jewelry, some of which dated back to the 7th century, resurfaced in London, having been stolen from Cambodia years ago. The stolen items belonged to British antiquity smuggler Douglas Latchford, who passed away in 2020 while awaiting trial in the U.S. After his death, his family promised to return the stolen collection to Cambodia. In February 2023, the items were finally returned and are due to go on display in the country's National Museum. The collection contains 77 pieces of gold and jewel-encrusted jewelry, including crowns, belts, and earrings. Items of note include a large bowl made of solid gold, thought to date back to the 11th century and used as a rice bowl for Angkorian royalty. Many of the items can be matched to stone carvings on the walls of Angkor Wat, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. However, it's still unclear how and when the jewelry was stolen and how it made its way to London. Cambodian authorities believe that more Angkorian jewelry is yet to be found, they have evidence from Latchford's email correspondence that he was attempting to sell the collection secretly from a North London warehouse as late as 2019, and not all of it has been accounted for. Every version of the story behind the name of the Polish city of Krakow involves a dragon. According to the most popular of the stories, a dragon once lived in a cave that's now part of the Wawel Castle complex. The dragon terrorized the city and demanded weekly offerings of cattle. To escape its tyranny, a cobbler named Croc stuffed a dead sheep with sulfur, which ignited in the creature's belly, forcing it to drink gallons of water from the river Vistula before it exploded. Croc married a princess, became king, built a castle atop the cave, and named the city in his honor. In another version, the dragon appeared during the reign of King Crocus. The king asked his two sons to rid the city of the dragon, the brothers came up with the same solution as Cobbler Croc, but quarreled after the dragon's destruction about who deserved credit for killing it. Lech killed his brother, Crocus, and eventually the city was renamed for the fallen brother. The cave is now a popular tourist attraction, and a bronze dragon sculpture by artist Bronislaw Kromi, featuring seven heads, was installed at the entrance to the dragon's den in 1972. One of the heads breathes fire thanks to a natural gas nozzle. Archaeologists from the University of Leicester Archaeological Service in England announced in March 2023 that they'd uncovered the base of a Roman-era altar stone under Leicester Cathedral, the first of its kind to be discovered in the area. The remains were found in the northwest quarter of the site, previously believed to be a garden space in the former Roman city. The altar was made of local sandstone from a quarry only one mile away and is elaborately decorated on three sides. The floor of the room it was found within is concrete, and the stone walls also were once painted, leading experts to believe that the cellar was a private shrine or devoted to religious worship. It was estimated that the altar would have originally been about two feet tall. 
The room dates back to the second century and was accessed by an external passageway with timber walls and a flagstone floor. The cellar was demolished and filled deliberately in the late third or early fourth century. Archaeologists hope that the findings will shed new light on the lives and deaths of Leicester's inhabitants over 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists in Georgia, South Caucasus, discovered a 4,000-year-old burial site containing two chariots, gold artifacts, and possibly human sacrifices in 2012. That was 2012 when the discovery happened, not when the human sacrifices happened. The site was discovered in a 40-foot-tall kurgan which dates back to the early Bronze Age. The burial chamber is believed to have belonged to a high-ranking person and contained the remains of seven individuals, one of whom was probably a chief. That assumption comes from the deductions about the likely purpose of a wooden armchair which was found in Kurgan. Experts think it was a throne, or at the very least it was a literal seat of power. Among other items recovered were clay and wooden vessels, flint and obsidian arrowheads, leather and textiles, carnelian and amber beads, and 23 solid gold items. The discovery of other Kurgan burials dating to the second half of the 3rd millennium BCE in the South Caucasus suggest interactions that occurred between nomadic people from the Eurasian steppes and farming communities within and near the South Caucasus might have begun to shape the culture of the region at about this time. Bear Gulch in central Montana, USA is home to more than 4,000 pictographs and petroglyphs dating back to as early as the beginning of the 10th century, making up the largest known collection of Plains Indian rock art. The 100-foot rock face has an abundance of depictions from everyday life, including warriors with shields and clubs and animals such as elk and bison. In addition to the ancient art, the site also contains graffiti marks carved by European settlers in the 1800s. These travelers heading west on the wagon trail left their names etched into the rock face, providing a unique combination of ancient and recent history. Interestingly, the importance of this site was not fully recognized until 30 years ago when archaeologists visited Bear Gulch in 1989. Further visits in 2005 and 2007 resulted in more art discoveries. The 2005 group recorded every petroglyph and pictograph on the rock face, discovering layers of richly colored images overlapping each other. The 2007 group investigated the grounds at the base of the gulch where they discovered ancient fire pits with stone tools, including vice vertebrae left over from someone's dinner more than a thousand years prior. Legend has it that King John of England stayed at Odaham Castle the night before he signed the Magna Carta. There's no proof of that, but then that's often the case with legends. If he did ever stay at the castle, it must have been in a much better state than it is today. Odaham Castle has stood in North Warnboro since the 13th century, but today it barely stands at all. We'll never know whether King John stayed in it, but we do know that he ordered it to be built. It was one of only three castles built during his reign, which is an unusually low number for a medieval king of England. The defensive qualities of the castle were tested not long after it was built, as it was besieged by French knights in 1216. The castle survived the attack and went on to host kings, members of the English elite, and even the entire English parliament for a time. Odaham fell out of favor with the royals in the mid-14th century, after which it found a new purpose as a hunting lodge for a century or two, before becoming abandoned at the start of the 17th century. Why is there a series of tunnels carved into the hillsides of Kyushu in Tamana, Japan? Well, if you can come up with an answer to that question, you'll win a lot of new friends in the Japanese archaeological community. They've been trying to uncover the secrets of the tunnels for decades, and they've had no success so far. The tunnels show clear signs of being made by humans, but are so small in some places that only a child could fit through their narrowest points. Confusingly, they then expand to heights up to 14 feet in other places. The tunnels run for 1,500 feet and have the appearance of being ancient, but nobody knows when they were built or why. They've been named Tonkararen, but nobody remembers where the name comes from either. It's close to the Korean for a stone thrown into a tunnel, but it's not a perfect match. To add to the mystery, elements of the stonework are similar to the style seen on the Great Pyramids of Egypt, but entirely dissimilar to any other known ancient Japanese construction. 
To top it all off, there's a shrine at the end of the tunnel, but we don't know who it's dedicated to. Ankhepenma is the name of a 3,000-year-old mummy who's on display at the Albany Institute of History and Art in Albany, New York, as part of an exhibit on ancient Egypt. The mummy was found with a companion at Bab el Ghassis in Egypt and dates back to the 21st dynasty between 1069 and 945 BCE. When the mummy arrived at the institute in 1909, it was incorrectly assumed to be a female due to poor interpretation and research. It was the Egyptologist Peter Lacavara who first suggested the mummy undergo a CT scan and x-rays in the 2000s. The scans revealed that the mummy had male pelvis bones, a masculine jaw shape, and thicker bones characteristic of the male anatomy. Researchers were able to identify the mummy as Akhefenmut, a male priest and sculptor of the Temple of Mut near Luxor. After careful study of the bones and the corresponding coffin, which had an inscription in hieroglyphics. Once Akhefenmut's body was confirmed, his robe and mummy board were located and put on display at the institute. The exhibit also includes over 70 other ancient Egyptian objects and is located in the Heinrich Medicius Gallery for those interested. Baduru Ugala is an ancient Buddhist temple in Sri Lanka known for its seven statues that date back to the 10th century and belongs to the Mahayana school of thought. The temple's name means the Rock of Buddha Sculptures. The gigantic standing Buddha statue here is the largest on the island at 16 meters tall and still bears traces of its original stuccoed robe, with a long streak of orange suggesting it was once brightly painted. The central of the three figures to the Buddha's right is believed to be the Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara, and to the left of this white painted figure is a female figure thought to be his consort, Tara. The original name of the temple is unknown, as its ancient history is undocumented. Experts think it may have been a hermitage for months. On the same rock where the major sculptures are carved, there's a carving about three feet wide and four feet high in the shape of a flame. The inside wall of this carved shape is always wet with a substance that smells very much like mustard oil, the source of which is unknown. It's time we paid a visit to Italy. It's worth the trip because it means we get to see sites like Aremo di Poggio Conte in Ischia di Castro. If you translate its name into English, you get Poggio Conte Hermitage. In form and function, it's a medieval church carved directly into the local tough rock, known to Italian historians for its unusual carvings. Some people believe the carvings were left behind by the Templar Knights, but as with most things about the Templar Knights, that can't be proven. The hermits who created the cave during the 11th century were likely inspired by the Gothic Cistercian architectural style that was popular at the time and added residential spaces within their church so they could live there. If they were responsible for the mysterious symbols, we have no idea what they meant by them. They're not consistent with any known Christian symbols of the time. There were once many beautiful frescoes here, but six of them were stolen in 1964 prompting local authorities to move the remaining ones to a local museum for protection. Our final incredible ancient artifact is called the Divination by Astrological and Meteorological Phenomena. If that's a bit of a mouthful for you, you can call it by its nickname instead, the Book of Silk. The nickname is a literal one. It's a manuscript made from silk and was made by the astronomers of the Western Han Dynasty which lasted from 202 BCE until 9 CE. Despite being made of such a delicate material, it survived for centuries at the Mengwangdo Archaeological Site in Changsha Hunan until it was discovered there during exploratory work in 1973. The Silk Book appears to be a complete record of astronomical observations from its era, detailing the presence and movement of stars in the sky and the visitation of no fewer than 29 comets over a three-century period. The information contained in the book is so thorough that it's still used as source material by modern astronomers and is considered to be the first complete atlas of comets in world history. It's an illustrated work, with each illustration accompanied by a caption explaining what happened on the ground during the comet's appearance. From those captions, we can see that the comets were blamed for everything from plague and droughts to royal deaths. 
We're guessing that the people of the era probably didn't wish on shooting stars like we do today. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.